they're here. Alright, so this is hopefully all the electrical components we need to restore this recorder. Now before we start replacing the old capacitors with these new film capacitors, we need to figure out the polarity, because that is not stated on the package, on any of these. When you try to find information about the orientation of film capacitors, most sources will tell you that it doesn't matter how you orient them. That is false, and I will show you why. A bit simplified, capacitors consist of two conductive sheets that are stacked on top of each other, separated by an insulator. These sheets are then folded into a more manageable size. We can now see that the white sheet is completely shielding the rest of the capacitor. That means that the terminal that is connected to the outer sheet should be connected to a low impedance source that is not sensitive to disturbances. That will then act as a shield to the more disturbance sensitive terminal. Now you could fold these sheets into a more complicated shape to get it more or less completely bidirectional. And I don't know if that's the case for modern surface mount film capacitors, but I'm pretty sure these classic type capacitors are made with a distinct outer shield. But we'll find out. So here I am trying to figure out the polarity of the new capacitors, and it turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. Some of them seem to be more or less completely bidirectional. So after questioning my measurement equipment for a while, I went and got one of these old aero film capacitors that I had laying around. We can see that even though this is a film capacitor, one terminal is clearly marked. So this mark indicates that this terminal is connected to the outermost foil. So this terminal should be connected to the lower impedance node. So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing here. I'm going to connect the capacitor to the oscilloscope using these alligator clips. And then we will see on the oscilloscope how well the capacitor picks up noise. We will then reverse the polarity of the capacitor and see if it picks up less or more noise. Let's start by connecting the capacitor incorrectly. So I'm connecting the high impedance input of the oscilloscope to the outermost foil and connecting the ground to the other terminal. So what is happening now is that I'm coupling noise to the capacitor through my fingers. As we can see on the oscilloscope we have about 4 or 5 millivolts peak to peak. Now we'll reverse the polarity. So now, as you can see, there is almost no measurable noise at all. Let's swap it back one more time. So what you're seeing on the oscilloscope is 50 Hz picked up by me as an antenna and coupled to the capacitor. And when the outermost foil is connected to ground, it is much less noise sensitive. Now let's test one of the new ones. About 70 millivolt peak to peak. Now with the polarity reversed, almost the complete same result. Okay, so does this mean that they've managed to make the capacitors more resilient to interference, no matter which way you install them? Let's do a comparison. Here we have the new 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We have an interference of about 10 millivolt peak to peak. Let's reverse the polarity. Here we have slightly more 11 millivolt peak to peak. Now let's compare it to this older 0.1 microfarad capacitor from Aero. Here we have about the same noise level as the previous capacitor, about 10 millivolt peak to peak. Now let's reverse the polarity. Now the noise is barely 2 millivolt peak to peak. So when this one is connected correctly, it is far more noise resilient than the new one. To be clear, this is a high quality capacitor from Connell Dublier. They should know how to make capacitors. They've been around since the beginning, quite literally. So I was scratching my head for quite some time trying to figure out why the shieldings on these are so bad compared to the old ones. But I think I found the answer. Apparently, in order to make these capacitors handle very large voltages without being really big, they used a method where they partially metalized the sheet. So instead of having two solid metalized sheets, 
like the classic design, one or both of them could be split up into sections and this would effectively create multiple capacitors in series, which makes it able to handle larger voltages without increasing the size too much. So if that's the case, that means that instead of having one solid metal sheet on the outside of the capacitor, you would have a sheet that is broken up into sections. So as we can see on the first capacitor, this is the terminal that should be connected to a low impedance net, because that is connected to the othermost foil. And that means that this sheet would act as a shield for the entire capacitor. But in the case of split up sections in the sheet, only this part would act as a shield. So in this case, where the top sheet is split up into two sections, barely half of the capacitor would act as a shield. And if you split up the capacitor in even more sections, an even smaller part of it would act as a shield. So if that's the case with these capacitors, that would mean that one part of the capacitor are less susceptible to interference than the rest. Let's test that out. Here we have the capacitor hooked up to the oscilloscope again. I'm going to move my grip from right to left and we'll see how much the noise changes. About 4 millivolts. About 8 millivolts peak to peak. About 14 millivolts peak to peak. Now I guess most film capacitors will have this behavior as you move closer to the high impedance terminal you might be coupling directly to that node. Let's compare it with the older capacitor. I'm going to hook it up in the correct way. Here we see basically no noise whatsoever. Not in the middle of the capacitor either. Barely anything closest to the terminal. So now I'm right on the edge and we can see that there is some noise. So as we can see this is not at all as affected by where on the capacitor I'm placing my fingers as the previous one was. So that strongly indicates that there is one solid sheet of outer shielding on this capacitor, while the other ones seem to have multiple sections. So the lesson here would be that you shouldn't go for higher voltage rating than necessary, because that could actually lead to worse performance. Now that is a pretty good lesson, that is something I did not know. Now for this capacitor replacement I did not exceed the specified voltage ratings, except if I couldn't find a direct match. So now it will be interesting to see how these old wax capacitors are shielded, and if they are installed correctly. We'll be taking a look at this capacitor because this has an obvious preferred orientation. This terminal is connected to the gain adjustment potentiometer, so we have signal on this node, and the other one is connected to ground. In this case ground is the lowest impedance net, which means that this terminal should be connected to the outermost foil of the capacitor to shield this signal node. Let's start by connecting it what we think is the wrong way. High impedance oscilloscope input on the outer foil. About 400 millivolts peak to peak. Assuming this capacitor has a solid metallized outer foil, we should get significantly less disturbance when we flip the polarity if this capacitor was installed correctly. And it was, like there was ever any doubt. Now let's do a direct comparison between the old wax capacitor and the new film capacitor. Here we have a new capacitor, 20 millivolts peak to peak. Let's change polarity. Same level. Now we'll test the old wax capacitor. It's a little higher, around 40 mV peak to peak. Let's change the polarity. And now it's a lot less, about 5 mV peak to peak. So when installed correctly, the old wax capacitor has far superior interference resilience than the modern film capacitor. Now what I'm curious about is how they managed to make a paper based capacitor that can handle 2000 volts this much smaller than a modern plastic based film capacitor with the same ratings. And that is while still maintaining a solid metallized outer foil. And if that wasn't enough, if I'm interpreting this voltage rating correctly, this is for AC, which means that this could actually handle peak voltage closer to 3000 volts as compared to this that is only rated for 2000 volts DC. 
Now, it is a bit disappointing to replace these capacitors with components that will most certainly perform worse than the original. But for now, these paper capacitors do have to be replaced because they are degrading with time.